nestled between the Southeast Asian Peninsula and the Central Middle East Asia lies the Indian subcontinent. It consists of seven countries, the largest being India and the smallest being Maldives. With the majestic Himalayan mountain range in the north and the only ocean called after a country, the Indian Ocean, in the south, the subcontinent is home to all kinds of terrain, flora and fauna. Home to 23% of the world's population, the subcontinent has a varied history. The roots of the indigenous people of this region go back several millennia, evolving into the nations as it exists today. The cultural milieu of the region manifests a kaleidoscope of ritualistic practices, cuisines and dress styles. The subcontinent is also home to many great faiths, including four major religions, Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism and Christianity. Several historical sites are now under World Heritage Protection, especially the exquisite 400-year-old sparkling white Taj Mahal in North India. Grace Communion began its presence in the subcontinent in the late 1960s. Several people in Sri Lanka and India responded to the advertisement to our former flagship free magazine, The Plain Truth. A fledgling group of people in India and Sri Lanka began to form home groups, which later gave rise to the establishment of the worldwide Church of God in both countries. Today, we have several congregations in India, the largest being in the city of Hyderabad. This is also where the national office of the church is located, having moved from the city of Mumbai. The congregations in Hyderabad began under modest circumstances, meeting in the home of senior member Mrs. Nancy Phillips. Since the church moved from Bombay to Hyderabad, we Phillips family had the privilege of hosting the church at our house. Our house group fellowship was so lively with challenging teachings from the scriptures and we all had a great time of fellowship. We always enjoyed our brethren coming together to our house to worship God. Today, God blessed us with our own premises where about 60 of us gather for worship services. The congregation is blessed to have the senior most member, Mrs. Santosh Noah Sandri in our midst. She is 92 years of age and she remains an inspiration to all of us in her faithful journey with the church. Every Sunday starts with an excitement for me to attend the church. The messages gave me the strength to move forward in life and encourages, encourage me always. I am very much blessed by the message of God's love. My heart overwhelms seeing four generations growing in the fear and knowledge of Christ. We have such a close relationship in the church that makes me feel special every time I come to church. Churches and congregations are also located in the cities of Chennai and Bangalore. These were under the pastoral care of Pastor Joseph de Costa. Pastoral teams have been set up to provide the oversight needed in these areas. A house church in Mumbai is under the care of pastoral team lead Sachin Nirale. The subcontinent is under the regional directorship of Pastor Dan Zachariah. He and his wife Mary have served the church since 1988. They provide pastoral and administrative oversight to congregations in the region. Wow, it's been wonderful 30 years uh, working with the Indian congregation. It has been a lovely journey. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Grace Communion in the subcontinent has adopted the strategy to build healthy churches in the region. Following the pattern promoted by the Home Office, our congregations are finding a healthy balance within the faith, hope and love avenue. Apart from inspirational worship every week, attempts have been made to manifest the love of our Saviour Jesus Christ. The church provides indigenously produced literature free of charge on various spiritual subjects. A summer enrichment program is provided to the youth of the community where teamwork, relational ethics, spiritual direction, 
and athletic opportunities are imparted. Our commitment to the children of our congregation is to provide regular spiritual nurture through our Sunday schools regularly held at church services. Every child is precious to God and special to us. Our children's church aims to build values of Christian faith in children. Through the classes, the knowledge of God's love and virtues are imparted. Through various activities, the children are given opportunities to practice the lesson learned. They are involved in leading the church services on various special occasions. A theological library is available for the members of the community in the national office to walk in and take benefit from. At Garrison and Rice Theological Library, we have a collection about 4,000 books. Pastors, leaders and people around us in the community, they come, read and make use of these books. Personal counseling services are also provided from the premises. Second Abad Counseling Center is run by GCI India. Here, our pastor and our trained pastoral team provide premarital, marital, youth, children, career counselings and people from the community make use of these services without any cost. Grace Communion also partners with other organizations to widen its reach to provide community care. A long-standing and fruitful partnership has been established with Person-to-Person -person Institute for Biblical Counseling. We come alongside them to train Christian counselors for churches. Grace Communion Church has tremendously blessed PTP. We have enjoyed the beautiful hospitality and the training facilities at GCC so generously offered to us unreservedly with great cooperation from the entire team at GCC. Not only that, we are also blessed by Pastor Daniel Zechariah as he offers his counseling services as one of the panel counselors for PTP. He also serves as a supervisor for our senior counselors. We pray that our partnership and our friendship will go a long way in the extension of this kingdom. Another partnership that has proved to be a blessing among the student community has been with Campus Crusade India. Grace Communion joins hands with them to organize seminars highlighting various issues that affect the student community. GCA have shared their resources with us and also helped our student community with their various teachings on topics such as depression, fear and anxiety and loneliness etc. Many youngsters were helped by the counselling which was provided by them and also by the booklets which was distributed freely on many topics. A vibrant women's fellowship focuses on needs among women and conducts monthly meetings to bring comfort and confidence through prayer. Jesus is the first man to recognize and endorse the importance of women. We find in the history that women brought hope in the society as agents of Jesus Christ. GCI's Women's Ministry works to bring the same hope to women in need through care and counsel. The women of our church meet once a month to pray and encourage one another. We also visit people in need as part of our outreach. Our Hope Avenue attempts to provide inspiring and enthusiastic worship to our brothers and sisters every week. Our Trinitarian emphasis helps members to connect with and pursue a rich relationship with Father, Son, Spirit. The deepest need of everybody is somebody. People are seeking for acceptance and for a sense of hope. As Church, it is our primary responsibility to be the hands and feet of Jesus that embraces people and walk towards them to show love. The focus of a worship is to reflect the Trinitarian life of God. This helps us to understand the power of God's love, grace and mercy revealed in Jesus who is our Saviour, Redeemer and Friend. So our worship is an opportunity to celebrate the relationship with God and His people. Our focus on Healthy Church has spearheaded the team-based, pastor-led leadership pattern for our congregations. It is heartening to witness the transformation taking place and the participation. It is encouraging as we are motivated by the high challenge, high support model. GCI is a home church and we are glad to have such a loving family. 
in GCI. We serve friends and families of GCI in North and West Central part of India. Team-based, pastor-led concept of leadership led us to a new dimension of church ministry. We could see a willing participation from our members in love, faith and hope avenues. Forming, speaking, worship, administrative and editorial teams eased the workload and enabled us to serve the church members individually and collectively. It is such a joy to see everyone in the church connected and served. Healthy church seems to be a high challenge, but it is possible with high support which we are receiving from our pastor, the leadership at the home office and from our triune God. We are so happy to see the church growing and moving towards the goal of becoming a healthy church. Roshan in Nepal and John Biswa and Amio in Bangladesh are also making efforts to establish healthy churches in their respective country. Roshan has made efforts to provide education by establishing a school in the village where he lives. John Biswa and Amio are working to bring the love of Christ in the communities they serve. Though the pandemic has severely restricted physical movements, the church continues to remain vibrant in its witness to the gospel through online services and Bible studies. Grace Communion in the subcontinent is dedicated to provide nurture and spiritual care to its members. It's been a blessing to be able to serve our church for 30 plus years now. And uh, today as we serve in our new roles, uh, my wife and I are grateful for the opportunity as well as working alongside Eugene and Meng Kong uh, in serving the brethren all over Asia. And we are looking forward to the various training programs to see our young uh, adults blossom in their new roles. And now as the youth take over, I thank God and I appreciate that the new GCI will move forward with gesto. The motto we have adopted in our congregation is blessed to bless. As we have been blessed through the revelation of God in Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, we push on ahead to bless others with this precious revelation. We join our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world to continue our journey of faith. God bless you all, even as we anticipate the fullness of God's kingdom, longing to eternally flourish in the embrace of our triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit.